Welcome everyone, I am Damien Smedley and I lead a research team at Queen Mary University of London as well as having a seconded role of Genomics England. Genomics England was set up by the UK government to deliver the 100,000 Genomes project and a new genomic medicine service for our National Health Service. So I'm going to introduce Examizer, our phenotype based approach to rare disease variant prioritisation developed together with my colleagues in the Monarch Initiative and then show how it has been used by Genomics England and other projects in their diagnostic and discovery pipelines. Most of you probably understand how standard rare disease exome or genome analysis pipelines work as shown in this slide, starting with the 30,000 plus variants in the typical patient exome. We remove the off-target and common variants which get us part of the way but still leaves us with tens or hundreds of candidates. We can then prioritise the rarest variants and those predicted most pathogenic by algorithms such as SIFT, polyphen and mutation taster, but this will rarely get us down to a single striking candidate. In successful exome sequencing projects, researchers have used other approaches in conjunction to narrow down the list of candidates. For, ex for example, by bringing in linkage data, looking for the same variant in multiple affected individuals, TRIO analysis or assessment of candidates based on prior knowledge of pathways in the disease. However, these approaches are not always possible, for instance, in very rare disorders. Here I'll show how we can use an alternative source of evidence, the phenotype data. With my Monarch colleagues, we are trying to approach this problem a different way by bringing in underutilised data to try and improve the diagnosis and treatment of disease. For example, by looking at reference knowledge of genotype to phenotype associations and how they relate to what we are seeing in the patient. This is where we have focused our initial efforts, but we are gradually starting to build algorithms to look at other omics technologies such as transcriptomics and finally the environmental impact on disease. Another key aspect to our work is exploiting the extra knowledge on genotype to phenotype associations that exist in other species, as we only know phenotype associations with the 5,000 disease genes in human. We have developed semantic algorithms to match phenotypic profiles between patients and other patients, known disease phenotype associations, as well as cross-species comparisons. Ontologies underlie all this work, the Human Phenotype Ontology for Human, and ontologies such as the mammalian phenotype ontology for the model organism data. Using ontologies allows us to do fuzzy matching where we can detect matches with a higher level term in the ontology. It also allows us to score how similar two phenotypic profiles are based on how many terms they share in common and how rare and informative those terms are. So if we have a patient with this profile in the middle and a variant in gene D, we can automatically detect it as phenotypically similar to a disease known to be associated with that gene, as well as a mouse model involving the orthologous gene. This slide shows an overview of Examizer that, as well as using the standard variant filtering approaches, takes advantage of phenotype comparisons. The idea is that for every gene in the exome, we can compare existing phenotypic knowledge with the patient's HPO phenotype profile. This phenotype knowledge comes from human disease da databases such as OMIM and Orphanet, model organism databases such as MGI and ZFIN, as well as the High Throughput International Mass Phenotyping Consortium program. For genes that still have no phenotype data from these multiple sources, we can use a guilt by association approach to predict what phenotypes they may have using protein protein association networks from StringDB. For every gene we get a score for how similar its known phenotypes are to the patient. We can then combine this score with variant based measures of candidacy, such as how rare and pathogenic the variant is predicted to be. The idea is at the end we are left with a single striking variant candidate that is rare, predicted to be highly pathogenic and affecting a gene where previous disruption has been shown to cause a similar phenotypic effect to that seen in the patient. Here we show the performance of Examize on simulated exomes where a known disease variant has been spiked into unaffected exomes from the 1000 Genomes project. The vertical axis shows the percentage of exomes that have the causative gene as the top hit after running through Examizer. The first bar shows the performance we get from just using the variant allele frequency and pathogenicity prioritisation. 
the second bar the performance sorting by phenotypic similarity alone, and the third bar is the combined final performance using the Examizer score. As you may expect for detecting known disease gene associations, the human disease phenotype data is critical and we can get almost 100% performance. We can also test the ability of Examizer to discover novel associations by removing these known disease gene associations for each run. Here the combination of variant and phenotype data is critical, with the model organism and protein-protein interaction data adding a lot to the performance relative to just using human disease phenotypes alone. Soon after developing Examizer, we worked with the NIH Undiagnosed Disease Programme to help in their goal of diagnosing patients through deep phenotyping and sequencing of patients. These patients have undergone a long diagnostic odyssey, often more than five years, because they have atypical presentations of known diseases or a completely novel disease. So the first thing we did was to test Examizer under various conditions on the 11 solved cases. So I'm not going to go through all the combinations on this slide, but the conclusion was as expected use of genotype, phenotype and inheritance data was the best approach and was able to solve more than half the cases as the top Examizer hit. And Examizer identified all the solved variants in the top 10. We then applied Examizer to their unsolved cases and achieved new diagnosis, including some novel discoveries such as this association between York platelet syndrome and STEM1. The UDP patient had a number of signs and symptoms, including various platelet abnormalities. And the same heterozygous missense mutation was seen in two patients and ranked top by Examizer. This variant was never seen in any of the SNP databases and it was predicted maximally pathogenic. Examizer ranked it first based on the curated mass model involving a heterozygous missense point mutation introduced by chemical mutagenesis and this mass exhibited strikingly similar platelet abnormalities. At this stage we were pleased with Examizer's performance, however as we've all seen many cases and indeed the majority remain unsolved after XM analysis and it's predicted that a substantial proportion of these may be due to mutations in non-coding regions that are not targeted or analysed in exome analysis. There is precedent, of course, for regulatory variants causing Mendelian disease, but confirmed examples of this are somewhat difficult to extract from the existing databases. Many of the documented examples are simply errors, or there is little evidence, or they are just susceptibility rather than Mendelian variants. Therefore, to have a data set of real confirmed cases, we curated 414 variants from the literature that were validated by experimentation or co-segregation studies, for example. And these are shown here broken down into their location relative to genes. This set of validated variants gave us good positive controls to investigate how best to identify Mendelian non-coding variants. Using these positive controls, we used machine learning to train a new score for non-coding pathogenicity called the REM score. To make this new score useful for whole genome analysis, we extended the current Examizer code base, as shown on this slide. At the top of the slide, the stars represent variants in coding regions, as well as introns, promoters, UTRs and intergenic regions, including predicted enhancers from Phantom 5 and the Ensemble Regulatory Build. Obviously, the reality is a bit more complicated than this with our 4 million variants in a typical patient genome and variants affecting most genes. Under the broad assumption that regulation of a gene by a non-coding mutation will cause similar phenotypes to that observed from coding mutations in the same genes, we first of all identify those genes that when disrupted exhibit similar phenotypes to the patient. We then remove any genes below a particular phenotypic threshold. Next, we remove any non-coding variants that are more than 25 kilobase pairs from a gene and not in a predicted regulatory feature followed by removal of any common variants. Finally, we prioritise the remaining variants based on the phenotype score of the gene, the allele frequency and the predicted pathogenicity from the REM score for non-coding and standard measures for the coding variants. And after all this, again, hopefully we are left with a single rare pathogenic variant from the initial several million in the whole genome that affects either the coding region of the gene or affects regulation of the gene in the non-coding space.
We benchmarked using a similar strategy to before where we add one of the 414 known regulatory variants to a whole unaffected genome from the 1000 Genomes project. Here we show the percentage of genomes where we get the correct causative variant as the top here out of the initial 4 million plus variants. And you can see for the known regulatory variants we get nearly 80% performance shown, on, shown in orange in this graph. Where we use a more realistic, limited and noisy phenotypic profile shown in yellow, the performance does drop a bit and also the performance varies depending on the class of variant, i.e. whether it's promoter, UTR, etc. We show, also show a comparison under the same conditions to, to the only existing tool that can perform phenotype-based genome analysis, FENGEN, and we achieve a much better performance. A number of other exome analysis tools that utilise HPA annotations of the patient have been produced since we first published Examizer, and we made a review of these back in 2015 in Genome Medicine. Phoenix is an alternative algorithm available in the Examizer framework that only looks at human disease data. FENGEN combines the Phenomizer and random walk protein protein approaches developed by the Monarch Initiative, along with some novel ways of assessing pathogenicity. Ecstasy uses a very different approach where the HPA profile is used to retrieve genes associated with these terms and then scores how similar the genes in the exome are to these retrieved genes in terms of sequence similarity, co-expression, as well as involvement in the same protein-protein interactions or pathway. Fever does a similar thing except it also uses other ontology annotations from the mammalian phenotype ontology, gene ontology and the disease ontology. In this benchmarking, we spiked in known disease variants to exomes and recorded how often each software identified this variant as the top hit in black or in the top 10 or 50 in shades of grey. To simulate the typical scenario in clinical sequencing projects where it's a struggle to collect phenotype data, we only use three randomly selected, selected disease phenotypes as input and added imprecision by making two of them more general terms and added noise with two completely random terms. Examizer performed best with Phoenix and Fever also doing quite well. All of these tools except Fever are available freely to use for academics and companies. Examizer has been open source since day one and has been adopted by numerous research groups, diagnostic labs, companies and software platforms. We are the only approved software for variant prioritisation by the International Rare Disease Research Consortium. Matchmaker Exchange software is used by researchers worldwide to discover new cases for very rare conditions and Examizer forms the phenotype matching component of some of the most successful implementations of it, Phenome Central and Matchbox. It has also been incorporated into integrated genotype and phenotype platforms such as Phenopolis, SolveID and RD Connect. More than 20 papers have been published over the last few years describing the use of Examizer in new disease gene discoveries and diagnostics. One nice example of a group using Examizer completely independently without our help comes from the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. In the recent paper, they describe their pipeline that relies on Examizer for all variant prioritization. This enabled them to diagnose 28% of singletons and 41% of family cases with a fast turnaround many results being returned within a week. 72% of the diagnoses were ranked as the top Examizer candidates and 93% in the top six. Satisfyingly, four of the diagnoses were originally prioritised by Examizer before any known disease gene association existed. And here the evidence came from our mouse or protein-protein interaction evidence. And confirming publications of these associations appeared over the next couple of years from other groups that have published disease gene discoveries. A similar study has just been published last month on the set of 134 retinal cases that had undergone whole exome sequencing. So this is semi-independent validation of Examizer as Valentina Cipriani, who led this research, has recently joined my research team. But she reports a very similar performance level of 74% as the top candidate. 94% in the top five and it's nice to have this confirmation from a different clinical site and a different set of disease samples. I'm now going to move on to the 100,000 Genomes project that was set up by the UK government and NHS England in 2014. 
The sequencing of the 100,000 genomes was completed at the end of 2018, with most cases now reported on. Congenica was one of three clinical decision support platforms used for the project, and based on that success, they were selected as the sole platform for the subsequent genomic medicine service. Uniquely, they incorporate Eximizer in their platform, and this was used to prioritise variants in the 100,000 Genomes project. The mission of the project at the outset was to sequence 100,000 whole genome sequences from rare disease and cancer patients to discover new diagnosis and at the same time build an infrastructure to enable biomedical research, stimulate the genomics industry to generate investment in the UK and to do all this in an ethical and transparent manner. We have now introduced Eximizer as an ISO accredited service for Genomics England. In the ISO validation, 87% of the known diagnoses are identified as the top hit and 95% in the top five. This slide shows the performance of the 100,000 Genomes Project automated pipeline in detecting diagnoses on the first 5,000 genomes to be interpreted. A virtual panel based pipeline also used by Genomics England records 76% of the diagnosis. Eximizer records 75, 84 and 85% of these diagnoses in the top, top three and top five candidates respectively. Eximizer and use of panels was complementary with 90% of diagnoses recalled automatically when both were considered. We also show precision phenotyping of our patients was essential for both Eximizer and the selection of additional panels without which only 52% of the diagnosis would have been prioritised in the disease panel. Despite these successes, we still have many undiagnosed cases and this is going to be the biggest challenge in the future. Some will undoubtedly involve non-coding variants and actually 4% of our diagnosis in the 100,000 Genomes Project first 5,000 genomes already involved a non-coding variant. These included known pathogenic ClimVar variants identified by Eximizer, as well as novel variants identified through research analysis and using Genomizer, for example. But there are undoubtedly software improvements to be made in this space and more to discover. Better calling and understanding of more complex structural variation will also help to diagnose more cases. An in-depth research analysis of the first 5,000 genomes identified 9% of the diagnosis involved a structural variant. And in our next release of Eximizer, we offer the ability to prioritise structural variants alongside SMVs and indels. Many unsolved cases will involve a variant in the gene that is yet to be shown to be associated with Mendelian disease. Eximizer can identify these already based on matches to existing mouse models or direct interactions with known disease genes. We've also developed a gene burden testing approach using the Eximizer results to find enrichment of particular classes of variants in the gene in disease cases versus controls. 550 significant disease gene associations have been identified by this approach and we're exploring some of them further to see if we can accrue enough evidence to declare new disease gene discoveries. One example is hereditary spastic paraplegia and UBAP1. Rare loss of function variants were detected by Eximizer in 5 of 417 cases versus only 3 in some 16,449 non-neurological disease controls. These variants were absent from the control cases in NOMAD. Eximizer had ranked them highly based on direct protein interactions through a known spastic paraplegia gene, VPS37A, and both are part of the endosomal sorting complex. Around the time we discovered this, evidence was published confirming UBAP1 as a new causative gene for hereditary spastic paraplegia. So it was disappointing we could not publish first, but reassuring that the approach works, and we are focusing now on the other candidates. Another discovery from the 100,000 Genomes Project where Eximizer played a leading role is a new intellectual disability gene. Initially, we realised that Eximizer had prioritised rare predicted damaging de novo variants in this gene in six intellectual disability cases, but no other cases in the project. Eximizer had ranked the variant in the top three in all cases based on direct protein interactions to a known intellectual disability gene of a similar disease phenotype profile to the patient. Since then, several groups have come together through gene matcher queries to identify 25 cases 
and functionally validate the association and the paper is now in preparation. To end with, here is a reference slide of publications describing how to use Exalyzer in Nature Protocols and describing the various algorithm implementations over the years. Exomizer is already incorporated into Congenica Vivariate Prioritization to enable quicker and more effective diagnostics using all the functionality I've described in this talk. The Exomizer development team works directly with Congenica to ensure that the current and future versions of Exomizer are optimized for their users. In addition, we are working with them on releasing a new easy to use cloud based service later this year. There are too many people involved in the 100,000 Genomes project and the Monarch Initiative to fit on one slide, but I wanted to thank the patients and their families, NHS England staff, all the Genomics England colleagues, UK Biobank and the Loom, the, the interpretation companies, and the GSIP members from the 100,000 Genomes project, and all my colleagues that formed the Monarch initiative.